Good morning, Word Warriors. Gosh, it's good to have you back today. We're on day 116, and judging by the, the comments and the private messages I got, I'd say a lot of people are struggling in the area of toxic people. Um, I am going to start with a scripture today found in Isaiah 26.3. It's our power verse. It says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. If anything or anyone cost us our peace, it's, it's too much. It costs too much. And it doesn't please God. He wants to be the focus of our lives. And when we have peace, it can happen. When we don't have peace, we're constantly looking at everybody else and upset all the time. And we're not worth a plug nickel in the kingdom right then. Being a Christian is a balancing act. We have to love people unconditionally. That's a given. That's a given. But you can love at a distance. And that sometimes is what you have to do with some people because of the way they treat you. I'm going to say this. Some of you don't want to hear it, but I'm going to say it anyway. People will treat you according to what you allow them to do. If you treat them like crap, that's not their fault. That's your fault because you have allowed them to do that to you. You've allowed them to make you feel badly about yourself. They're responsible for their actions, but you've allowed it by not drawing a line. Tro you ever known that, that toxic people will set you up so you're walking on eggshells all the time? I hate that. I don't want to walk on eggshells with people. And some people, you can't, you got to be careful what you say because they'll twist it and use it against you. Or they'll tell people, well, you know, she told me this. And it isn't anything like you've said. They want to keep you in your place. And that place is always lower than where they are. And they, now listen to me on this. They would rather see you comply than they would see you happy. Is that really what you want for your life? If you're an addict of any kind, you're going to understand what I'm saying right here. Because toxic people, the people that allow toxics in their lives, these toxic people, they have an emotional stronghold here. And, and we call it a soul tie. A soul tie, your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. But we have been become addicted to the treatment that we get. And it's not that we want it. But and we don't like the results of it, but we've got a problem and we need a detox. We need an emotional detox. The first thing we do is ask Jesus to set us free. The Bible says in John 8, 36, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. That's a statement of victory. And, and if you go back in the Greek, the word for free means to liberate, to set free from prison, to release. Or to set free. If you finally step away from a toxic relationship, don't go back. Don't go back. No matter, no matter how lonely you are, you know, going back to a toxic relationship because you're lonely is like drinking poison because you're thirsty. I'd rather be dehydrated and lonely than go back to the way it's always been. Think about it. They're not going to change. They're not going to change unless you force them to change. Lonely is a season. You'll get through it and you'll find new friends or you'll find new new people to be around. But, but soul ties are forever unless you break the soul tie. And that's what God had Abraham do. Break that soul tie, Abraham. He brought Ishmael in. Now you've got to get him out. L I, I want you to think about this. Toxic people don't give up easily. And they will battle you with guilt every time. They're going to throw guilt on you. How could you do this? You're a Christian? Are you kidding me? Yes, you are. And you value your peace, your time with God, your focus on Him. And these people are pulling you away from it. So if they've never been held accountable for their actions, I guarantee you, you're going to have a fight on your hands. Because... They're going to they're gonna puff up. They're going to be offended. But if you want to break free, you're going to have to go through that part. It's up to you. 
When you finally speak up and set some boundaries, they're going to throw everything they can at you to make you feel awful. They'll pile on the guilt. They'll say, how dare you that you don't like my behavior? Who do you think you are anyway? Well, then your mind jumps in. First, the devil comes in. He goes, what if they're your assignment? What if God wanted you to be the one to bring them out of this? Now, don't fall for that one. This one, your mind jumps in. And you go back to that mess because you don't want people talking bad about you. I can't believe she's not talking to her mother. Well, I can't believe he's not talking to his kids or his kids aren't talking to him. Sometimes you need to know the background before you judge a situation. How do you explain to somebody that you can't speak to somebody in your family, you can't be with them because they tear you down? Here's the thing. God was the first one to set boundaries. In Joshua 1, 3 to 5, it says this. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, you will be on the land I've given you. From Negev wilderness to the south of Lebanon mountains to the north from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. I was with Moses and I will be with you. I will never fail you or abandon you. We're so blessed when we stay inside the boundaries God set down for us. Noah stayed in the boat. Noah was saved. This, why is it then that it's so doggone hard for us to stay inside the boundaries? Well, one thing is we don't want to make people mad. I don't think I should be making them mad. Well, it's, I mean, it's not the best thing you've ever done. But some people, they don't get it any other way. You're not good at confronting, like me, just staying away from my own house because I didn't want to confront somebody. We think we're already keeping the peace because we don't say anything. That's not peace. That is a self-imposed prison. Are you hearing me? Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows out of it. from With our thoughts, our inner man, our emotions, all of that flows out of our heart. And if we don't get it, if we don't guard it, somebody else is going to run our life. Do you ever live your life dreading to see certain people? Those people are toxic if you dread seeing them. When you set a boundary, you start with a hard conversation. I'll just tell you up front. Here's the hard conversation. If, if you, were, you need to say something like, you know, I love you, but I can't continue letting you talk to me like this. Um, if you were a boss and somebody was late every day and you had a hard talk with them and said, you can't, I can't tolerate this. If you show up late one more time, I'm going to have to take action. They show up late and what do you do? You have to fire them. You said you were going to do it and you do it. It's no different than this. I, I think, don't be surprised that if they turn around on you and go, well, I don't know what I've done wrong. Tell me, tell me what I've done wrong. How do you explain 20 years of pain to them? Because they're just not getting it. You might have one in mind so that you can throw it out there if they happen to do that. Just remember this. They don't want to be responsible for their actions. They don't like that. It doesn't feel good to them. It doesn't feel good to anybody to have to do that. I just heard this statement and I thought it was really good. It said this. I'm no longer accepting apologies from you. I want to see changed behavior. That's pretty rough, isn't it? It's funny how we long for a good relationship with that person. We really do. But most of the time, it can't happen because they don't know how to move out of their toxicity. And they spread that wherever they go. I'm going to stop with that today. Um, I hope you've gotten something something out of this. But more than that, I want to tell you one thing. You deserve to have good, loving, supporting people around you. Don't settle for less. Oh, Father, help us in this area. Help us not to settle for anything less than your best in our lives, Lord. Help us to use wisdom and direction and guidance in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless. See you in the morning. Have no idea what I'm going to talk about.